in today's video, we're going to be creating a key gen for Ziggy's key gen me. Let's use PEID to see what it was compiled with. It says MASM32 and TASM32. That's great. We're not going to have any compiler generated code loading up the software. Let's use depends.exe to see what functions they, it imports. We see it's using functions from user 32 and kernel 32. This is going to be for the graphics stuff. And this is for everything else. Let's run the program to see what, how it behaves. It's asking us for a username. We see, please enter your name. I'm going to type in I and it says name must be at least two characters. We see unregistered. So I'm going to put I on Ismael. Now it's saying to enter a serial and register. I'm going to type in please like and subscribe. Hit register. We get this message box, invalid registration details. I'm going to open up my command prompt. I'm going to cd into my documents folder slash Python scripts. I'm going to run my key gen. I'm going to put I am Ismael. And this is what the key should be while the serial. Hit register and we say registration accepted. Thank you for your support. Let's see how I did this. I'm going to load up the binary into Ida. There's a, a lot of useful string functions here that we can take a look at. We can see the message box. We see a, one function that's undefined. So I'm going to double click on the message box. I'm going to click on the name. I'm going to hit X to see what cross references there are. And there's two. I'm going to hit OK on the first one. And we can see invalid registration details. If we scroll up, we see unregistered here. Right next to it, we see registration accepted. Thank you for your support. Scrolling up, this is caused by the return value of this undefined function. So it's safe to it's safe to assume that this is the validate key function. I'm going to hit OK. And the reason why I'm assuming it's caused by this, the return value is stored in EAX. We see this or EAX EAX jump if not zero. It jumps here. If it is zero, it jumps here or maybe the other way, way around. Jump if it's not zero. Doesn't matter. Let's hop in. I'm going to right click. I'm going to hit text view. This is um, your standard um, function prologue. We see a push offset SC to character uppercase. So whatever we're passing to this function, it's being uppercased. At this point, we can minimize this. We'll open up the binary using 64 debug. And I'm going to press the run button. Now we're at the start of the program. We need to go to the address 4012C7. So I'm going to press control G. I'm going to enter 4012C7. Hit OK. I have my breakpoints from earlier. Let me remove those really quick. OK, so this is the start of the function. I'm going to put a breakpoint. I'm going to hit the run button. I'm going to enter anything. Hit register and our breakpoint is activated. If we look on the stack, we see our username. So let's go back into Ida and rename this um, variable. I'm going to press the end button. I'm going to name it username. So I'm going to add the comment here that username is equal to username dot upper. Next, we see a call to string length. So it's going to be username length is equal to length of username. Let me remove this comment. Okay. The return value from string length, it's um, moved into EDX. Then there's a test EDX jump if less than or equal. And it jumps to the end of the function. We're returning one. So if our username is zero characters long, this function returns one. So bad username length. 
return one. Let's go back up. If user if length of username is less than two, because earlier we saw that the username needed to be at least two characters long. We'll take this jump, hit OK. We're clearing ESI. We're moving one into ECX. If we highlight ECX by clicking on it, we see it's used here um, right after move our username into EAX. So right here, EAX is equal to username. Uh, and then we see we're moving our username plus ECX minus one into AL. So we're getting whatever character at index of ECX minus one. Uh, so it's username index minus one. And we're storing that in AL. And we're gonna rename this to index is equal to one. We see this comparison, AL is being compared with 20 hex. If, if AL is equal to 20 hex, we'll take this jump. We see an and EAX with hex FF. Originally, I couldn't figure out what this was. I had to run it in uh, 64 debug, and I'll show you guys that now. But essentially, what's going on is here, EAX is being to set to a pointer, something like four, blah, 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 whatever. And then we're modifying the lowest bit of AL set and we're setting it to the character pointed at by this value. So let's assume it's A. So we're modifying this bit and we're setting it equal to that A. What this will do is it'll clear out everything else and make EAX equal to just that character. I'll show you guys in um, 64 debug. So I'm going to step over, step over. This is where we're going to load EAX. We're going to modify this bit here. So I'm going to press step over and you saw that value change we see that comparison with 20 hex step over step over and after this instruction this is only going to be 50. so step over and that's the first character of our username let's go back into ida and what we're gonna we're gonna modify this comment here we're gonna say EAX is equal to username index minus one. Then we're multiplying that character value with a hard coded um, D word value. Let's double click on that to see what that value is. It's 1749. I'm gonna hit the escape button to go back. I'm gonna press N. I'm gonna rename this to encryption key. EAX is equal to times equal encryption key. And that can also be um, re well rewritten as username index minus one is equal to times equal encryption key. Then we're, we see we're decrementing whatever value we, we got back. So it's EAX minus minus. Then we're storing that value into ESI. We cleared ESI originally. So this is gonna be the serial key is equal to zero. Hit okay. And then serial key plus equals um, whatever value was returned earlier. Then we see on increment ECX, we're moving on to the next character. We're decrementing EDX. 
which is the string length of our username. And then there's this jump back to do it all over again. So this is a loop here. If we scroll down, double click on here. This is just the buffer. So let's go back. We're loading um, EDX to a pointer to this buffer. We're moving our serial into EAX. We're pushing EAX. We're pushing this offset, which is a format string. And we're calling sprintf. The rest of this function is pretty much just going to give us the key. All, all keys start with S and D dash and whatever value we got in ESI. So if we wanted to rewrite that in Python, it would look something like this. So we're prompting the user for to enter a username. We're setting a value of minimum, minimum length is equal to three. We don't have to do that, but I think it makes the code look cleaner. And then there's this while loop. While the length of the username is less than the minimum length, uh, we're going to prompt the user. Username must be at least three characters long. Try again. And we ask them for that username again until they enter a username that's longer than three characters long or e at least three characters long. Then we're setting username equal to username.upper. We're uppercasing whatever string they passed in. We're declaring our encryption key. We're setting our correct serial. And we have a for loop. We're looping through the string on each iteration where we have the character. We're multiplying it by the encryption key and we're subtracting by one. And then we just print SND dash and whatever we get from that um, operation. And that's how this key gen works. I hope you enjoyed the video. Make sure to like and subscribe and I'll catch you guys next time. I really hope you enjoyed this video. Again, guidedhacking.com slash donate, patreon.com slash guidedhacking. Please support us so that we can continue to make videos and peace out.